Welcome, my name is Ash. Hello from my vacation in New Jersey. On October 14th, Bio released a new trailer called Hero of Thetis for Dragon Age Inquisition. Let's dissect it. Now to start, while well, I've never stopped to talk about a rating for a trailer breakdown, I think now's the time, since the ESRB has given an official rating for Dragon Age Inquisition. Let's take a look. Rated Mature for Blood, Intense Violence, Nudity, Sexual Content, and Strong Language. Tell me, what wasn't present in Dragon Age 2? If you guessed nudity, you were right. Or at least partially right, because partial nudity was noted on the ESRB rating for Dragon Age Origins. Not even DA2 had it. Even in the Mass Effect series, which had Liara standing practically naked in front of Shepard, the rating was only extended to partial nudity. Additionally, Inquisition had the intense prefix added to violence yet again. While present in Origins, Dragon Age 2 was merely violent. What do we know of the nudity and intense violent factors for Dragon Age Inquisition? Well, in one variation of the Mage Templar quest in Redcliffe Castle, Liliana is tortured by one of the Venatori. Alexius' son later also gets his neck slashed open by Sister Nightingale. With eight different romance options among companions and advisors, sex and perhaps sex scenes beyond the normal fade out players are accustomed to from Origins and 2 are quite the possibility. Looks like Bioware is seriously stepping up to the plate with the new Frostbite engine. Moving on. With the Inquisitor comes a damage strengthening flame rune attached to his sword. Or quite possibly the flames of the Inquisition exclusive sword featured in the deluxe digital pre-order. And an Inquisition shield and heavy plate, obviously a warrior, shifting into a shot so similar to the original trailer for Dragon Age Origins, instead of the Warden, Morrigan, Liliana, and Sten, we see the Inquisitor, Cassandra, Varric, and Solas. Kind of funny seeing it almost a decade after the Fifth Light ends. Does this come back to the beginning at Haven? The location of the peace talks between the mages, Templars, and the Chantry. The place of the catastrophic event that tears the veil and opens the breach. A bit of the FYI. Cassandra dragged Varric to see the Divine at Haven and explain his infamous story of Hawk, the champion of Kerbal. While Cassandra has her own goal of restoring the Inquisition to bring peace to the conflict. The breach in the distance, with the Inquisitor riding an armored horse down a path of soldiers, villagers, common folk, clergy. There are some watching intently, while some villagers are in the back keeping to themselves. The Adamant Fortress in the western approach that once held the famed Grey Wardens back before the Blessed Age. But what stands now is a desolate area is upgraded into a fortress of trade. A huge statue in the back, the Great Tarps, these different keeps the Inquisitor can acquire can be upgraded for military, espionage, or economic use. Solas walks with the Inquisitor on top of a snowy hilltop, holding a dual serpent staff, and looks towards Skyhold. The Inquisitor again, a rogue this time with his dual daggers on his back, what seems to be a mix of the real world and the Fade. Something that only happens in very specific places we've seen in the past, where there's a draw between the two. The location of the Breach, as well as the Red Lyrium infested Red Cliff Castle. The Great Warden Fortress has been shown multiple times in the past trailers. The Inquisition deliberately attacking the Grey Wardens. What we know now is that the Grey Wardens are possibly under the lure of Corypheus, an extremely powerful Tevinter Magister from the days of Dumont, as seen in past gameplays released by other YouTubers. While this scenario of the Inquisition attacking the Wardens may not be related to the Corypheus plot, it is a possibility that we've seen the great fight slowly unraveling before our eyes since these trailers back in E3 of 2013. The party, Inquisitor, Sarah, Dorian, Iron Bull, running from a venatory base of operations. A firestorm falling onto the ground with an unknown man, probably one of the freemen, being caught by the fire. The Great Warden Keep with an Inquisitor fighting a distinct mage with a beard just like Hawk, 
but the dark, long hair tied in a knot at the top of his head. Considering the attire a formed collar and white garb, I'd say Orlesian. He is definitely not a warden, you can tell by the lack of regalia on this man. What you see for half a second at 49 seconds, however, is that the man is holding up his hand to stop the Inquisitor, to stop him from attacking in that kind of gesture. And of course, the Inquisitor ignores and throws him back powerfully against the ground. The strange tentacled monster in the Fade that we've seen in the enemy trailer for Inquisition appears yet again, Stroud this time making an appearance against the creature. What we now know is that this engagement involves Hawk, an unknown blonde warden, by the way, who is not the warden, aka Hero of Ferelden, Stroud, and the Inquisitor, and they are all present in the Fade. The Breach again sending a massive comet to the ground, which is actually a fear demon, an archer Inquisitor that lies in a war-torn area, with Cassandra and Solas present. Then crosses to the Inquisitor, Cassandra, and Liliana at a Fade Rift. A shadowy figure approaches, similar to what we've seen in the Dragon Age 2 Legacy, where a cloudy, faded spirit appears with colored eyes and speaks. In Legacy's case, it was the incantations and spoken memories from Malcolm the Hawk, father of the champion of Kirkwall's Hawk. Red magic against the Inquisitor's shield being casted by the Fade Dragon could possibly be Red Lyrium cast into a powerful being. Who knows? The gates for the Grey Warden keep being rammed into, thus blasting all of the Grey Warden, securing the door away, and the Inquisitor walking forward. Considering such a casual walkthrough, I imagine the Inquisition had plenty of forces to actually overwhelm the Grey Wardens at this location, judging by past trailers where the Grey Wardens were easily being decimated. This seems to be the case, and the Grey Wardens are not a match. Doubling back to the scene with the Inquisitor, Cassandra, and Liliana, the Fade Rift being closed. Since Liliana cannot be a companion in the game from what we know so far, it's possible to guess that while a certain Fade Rifts closing are just simply tank and spank, other Fade Rifts will be essential to key areas. Possibly the Inquisitor is asked by an important NPC to close a rift, or a harder enemy is engaged. In any case, fast forward to a Fade Rift that summons a Pride Demon. The Inquisitor in the distance, while an unknown man, which what seems to be either in Ferelden furs or Avarian attire, at the front. The location of this seems to be like Red Cliff Castle, with all the red crystals and lyrium littered across. A dragon I've claimed on Twitter to possibly, possibly be Flemeth. Though a very quick shot of the dragon, the horns do have almost the right curvature as Flemeth's Dragon Age 2 version, horns curving inward and more than two of them. The character body model is also that iconic purple shade. Another shot of the dragon in the fade with horns slit back. This is definitely not the same dragon from the supposed Flemeth dragon. The horns of this one are faced backwards instead. The next dragon is also the hostile fade dragon that we've seen with spots and a more dusted, corpse-like, stone-like extremity. A red templar fighting against the inquisitor, shield with a red sun shown. The inquisitor fighting against Tevinter soldiers, made evident by the crest on their lower armor, as well as the distinct helmet garb we've seen in Dragon Age World of Thetis. Shows off the whirlwind area of effect attack that the Inquisitor has, but I'm not sure we're going to see a crowd of enemies lining up this easy. Cassandra, Farrakh, and Dorian present with the rogue Inquisitor within a keep containing a headless statue in the background, and the Fade Dragon from before perched. The dragon fight again with what I think to be Flemeth fighting against the Fade Dragon, and losing from what we see the Fade Dragon pushing the purple dragon into the ground. A warden being eaten by the Fade Dragon, while the corpse of the Orlesian character we saw the Mage Inquisitor attacking from earlier is lying motionless on the ground. The Inquisitor putting up his sword while Liliana at his side, a war cry I personally think Colin does way better. And the entire crew from left to right, Cole, Solas, Dorian, Cassandra, the Inquisitor, 
Iron Bull, Sarah, Blackwall, Vivienne, and Vac, all standing in the background with the Inquisitor at the front. And that is the Hero of Thetis trailer. Thank you for watching. A bit of note. Five weeks left. Welcome to the final stretch, everyone. Be sure to keep it here for more Dragon Age news and lore. Follow me on Twitch as well, as not only will I be streaming Dragon Age Inquisition profusely whenever it comes out, but also I will have some awesomeness to be had on November 7th, aka N7 Day. Take care everyone, Fen Harrell and Unsaw.